He was a drill master. Paid nobody anything, expected everything, and they all ended up honored to be working there. I was at the Peace Corps for uh, seven years, and I left to establish the magazine. Washington, the way an anthropologist looks at the South Sea Island. He really tried to get people to focus on something other than horse race politics and to focus on substance and how to find solutions to problems. It's so important to have reporting that focuses on performance, on what's actually happening, what is an agency actually doing, what are the, what are the Wall Street actually doing. I describe Charlie as an eccentric, endearing, quasi-genius. He does not do what uh, an editor is conventionally thought of as doing. I remember he told me once I had had a, a few curse words in an article. And uh, he said to me, he said, you only need one fuck. He said, see, if you have one fuck, it's really going to pop. So yeah, two or three pops, they're just going to think you don't know any bad. The problem in Washington that everybody perceives that government can't do anything. I feel the opposite. I feel government can do something. I have seen it in my lifetime. I think the politics of the, the magazine you know, came from a very New Deal Democratic. It was designed to be smarter about the way that you looked at government operations, you, the way you looked at policy making. He helped journalism see the defects in the mainstream, ordinary Washington way of covering things. What was wrong with just reporting the press conference and just reporting what was served up in the press release? And the world of kabuki and uh, fakery of all sorts. The liberals tend to be pro-government, conservatives tend to be anti-government. I think that is stupid. I think the point is to have a government to be concerned with the government that works. In this ecstatic state, uh, rain dancing his, his editors, Charlie would get you to a different level. It was about the central ideas and the larger ideas and how could you have forgotten this and don't forget this and you got to add that and you got to do this. And so when you look at most of the major publications in the country, they're just infiltrated with uh, Charlie proteges. You've got Nick Lemon and Jim Fallows and Kate Boo and all these all these people who he kind of got started. I would say that his greatest legacy is the writers that he trained and sent out into the world. Anybody who's worked for Charlie has kind of in the back of his head a little Charlie telling him, is that good enough? Are you proud of that? We all have been affected by it. We all put our own spin on it, but we're all Charlie's guys. Mm -hmm.